Oh, hey you. It's Kat and Steve with the Positively Midwest podcast. Well, hello there. Now, before this next episode, let's talk about sharing our mission. To help, we have hooked up with Anchor.fm to help us keep launching Positively Midwest to as many ears as possible. The more we expand our reach, the more lives we can help inspire. If you haven't heard of Anchor, it is the easiest way to make a podcast. Bonus, it's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Well, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and yeah, many more. You can make money with no minimum listenership, which helps our cause. It's everything you need to make a podcast in just one place. So go now, download free Anchor app or go to anchorapp.fm to get started. Now, sit back and enjoy the next episode of the Positively Midwest podcast. Hey everybody, I'm Steve Jurens and welcome to another episode of Positively Midwest. I think my wife is making a weird face while I talk like this, but let me introduce her in case this is your first episode, because that's what we should do. Across from me, as always, is my wonderful wife, Catherine. Hi. Hi. (laughs) Oh, my line to my computer screen went black for a minute and pop it back up and whatever, here we are, so... Anyway, so welcome to what I believe is episode 79 of Positively Midwest Podcast. Wow, we've done so many of these podcasts. I hope you guys are liking them. Yeah. (laughs) If this is your first one, welcome to the madness. If it's your first one, whoa, sorry about it. And if this is your 79th one, thanks for sticking around. (laughs) Yeah, because that's even more, whoa. (laughs) Okay, so I thought, you know, we like to tackle things that Catherine and I still continue to work on, need to work on, could learn more from, and learn with you guys. And I thought, well, we're pretty good at arguing with each other over 21 years, so let's take a look at what psychology.com, I mean psychologytoday.com, has to say about top 10 tips for constructive arguments with your loved one. Can I preface this yeah i wonder what you're gonna say uh (laughs) i mean do you really wonder are you reading my mind i think i know (laughs) all right um arguments in a marriage are normal that's exactly what i thought you were gonna say arguments in a marriage are healthy if you're doing it in the right way because it means that you are still communicating If you have given up hope in trying to talk things out, then you're in a different boat and then you need to seek some different, you know, maybe help for your marriage or your relationship. But if you are still arguing and still communicating and still talking, those are good signs and you are doing great. Yeah. And it does it with everything we've talked about in the past and whatnot as well, it takes to, to do these things. So if you're, However, in a vicious cycle, and you don't change for your partner, you don't change for yourself, excuse me, I don't want you to just change for other people, but um, if you're, you know how I like to get dramatic, if you're out murdering people and your spouse says, stop doing that, uh, you might want to change for them, which in really is changing for you, but... Well, and for society, if society, you're murdering yes. people. <laughs> uh, Thanks for always uh, making my uh, dramatized situations more realistic. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. I'm all about keeping it real here. So every couple argues, and if done correctly, it can be a pathway to growth. Every couple argues. Some of them do it overtly by yelling at each other while others do it covertly by avoiding contact and conversation that's me sometimes i can be both whatever the method the result is the same hurt feelings and disenchantment here are my tips to help you argue constructively if done correctly arguments can be a pathway to growth and problem solving and this is by barton goldsmith PhD again at psychologytoday.com. We just had Din Din, so I'm um, sorry if 
Um, sometimes it sounds like I'm uh, being quiet awkwardly. It's probably because I don't want to burp on the podcast. Heartburn. Heartburn is real. You know, it's, it's so... It's not heartburn. I'm trying not to burp on the oh. podcast, I said. <laughs> so go ahead, Preachy. Preach from the soul box and let us know. I mean, I feel like topics like this are ones that we're like not, you know, trained experts on, but... That's why I'm reading an article from psychologytoday.com. Yeah, but... The link will be in the description of the podcast. But experts in a sense, because we talked about our marriage in past episodes. You know, we've been together 21 years. We've been now married 17. And so we've definitely had our fair share of arguments. And while we talk about how much we've overcome, we, like he said at the beginning, we are continuing to work on these things and work forward. And so, you know, a topic like this even comes about, say, you know, our anniversary, I got him a gift and it says, sorry for what I said while docking the boat. Okay. It can be true for our first time ever docking our boat, or it can be true for our, how many ever time of parking a camper, you know, it's, we still have those things that can trigger the incorrect way of arguing so that we're doing the screaming of the matter of arguing. So now it's taking these topics that we find and that we've been living through and finding a way to educate and remind ourselves the proper way to handle it so that then we can relearn and want to share some of that knowledge and growth with all of you. Did I explain too much? I'm sorry. Uh, nope. <laughs> I just, you know, I'm keeping it real. I am trying to explain, like, even why. Well, you want to keep it real since you bring it up. So we are camping at a local camping establishment, and uh, Catherine rolls up in, in with the vehicle and the camper and goes to back up, and already is a ball of anxiety, and already is nervous, and uh, potential embarrassment ensues because of what could happen, worst-case scenario, so on. Uh, and a lot of the reason that is correct why we do so much self-help and uh, personal development and things and try to teach others is because we realize how difficult it really can be. So uh, already um, she's all wound up and I am a little wound up because I'm anticipating that she's going to be that way already, which instead of being compassionate, empathetic and realizing that she wants to be independent. She wants to know how to do this. There's no reason she can't. She's not a lesser human being and so on. I could have approached it differently and she could have approached it differently, but we got to that part after the argument. So she, I'm in the back and I'm not really quite sure because I'm not really directing very often. I'm usually the one driving and I'm pointing this way and then I'm thinking, wait, if I point this way, is she going to move the vehicle that way? I'm just trying to work it out in my head a little bit too. And then she was getting frustrated and she was anxious as forementioned. And then now some seconds probably seem like minutes and then a vehicle's rumbling down the road a ways. So uh, she's like, I can't see you. And in a loud voice uh, yelled that, which seemed really mad. And then I thought she was yelling at one of the girls and taking it out on them. So I come around from the corner and I was like, hey, don't be acting like a f- asshole. And uh, it's, it seems like that ex- escalated the situation <laughs> for some odd reason. And I'm not yeah. sure why. But then she said, I'm just going to go. Blah, 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 and I want to be there. And I'm like, no. Blah, 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 blah. And then she blah, blah, and I blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> uh, we were screaming at each other. And we got the camper parked. And then we put the shit down and did what we had to do and disconnected it. And then I took the step that I would not have taken probably in the past. And I forced her to talk about her feelings. And I still stood up for myself, allowed her And she did stand up for herself. And then we both tried to have compassion for each other and empathy. And I believe we even both apologized and then moved forward from there. So it set off the weekend because our boat that we'd had for three weeks, then we went to take out and I couldn't trim it up. And the battery was dead because we learned that the navigation light is on when it's up and on when it's down. (laughs) Off. And this electrician slash engineer manufacturer's world off is in the middle. <laughs> Every switch I've ever used in my life, down is off. 
So you could click up one for whatever the setting is and two for the other setting. Yes, and if Jimmy that doesn't crickets. help, you know, with the mood already being thick. Yeah, but we were able to make it through most everything, and I can't think of a day where we don't probably argue about something. It could be a debate, could be an argument. I don't know what your context listeners is of an argument, but obviously if there's any physicality, you need to walk away from each other. Someone needs to go, or you need to call the police. If you're screaming and hollering and effing you and effing that, and you got your chilling children around, we're pretty open with our kids, but there's times where we pump our brakes if we're getting too raunchy or nasty with each other. So you have to know what level, DEFCON level, of your argument is, but we probably argue at least once a day. And, you know, side note. In the middle of this podcast, I think we've already shared glances. <laughs> okay, so side note. It's my job to back in the trailer when we load the boat, when we go to leave, because that gives me less anxiety than to actually drive the boat, which seems so stupid. But that is my reality is I would rather be in charge of the trailer. And he can't tell me how to back it in because I can't hear him from the boat. So I'm all on my own and I... But you can hear her talking to the moon. Because I'm talking to myself because I'm going... I can't see a left, right. Oh, <laughs> what? Where? And no. Then forward a bit and... you, Cause, Yeah. Because I'm talking to myself. I'm going, I got to go to the left, so I got to turn to the right. I sing myself a little song. And then when I'm doing it at 11 o'clock at night and it's pitch black, yeah, I'm talking to myself, but all in a positive fashion because I'm giving myself those affirmations yes. to and do it. And so now it's gotten much better. Yep. And you've done a great job at it. Did you have an energy drink before we started this? No. Usually you're leaning back half asleep <laughs> yawning. And then I say, blah, 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 and look and you go, yeah. I don't know. Apparently this topic yeah. hits really good with me. <laughs> no. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. If you hear the kabooms in the background, our neighbors are still celebrating the 4th of July. Yes, yeah, so we're coming off of the 4th of July weekend. Obviously, this will come out July 7th, 2021 at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time, but we're currently recording it July 6th because we're last minute this week, but this topic has been top of mind for at least 28 minutes. So, <laughs> psychologytoday.com, an article put together for the 10 Tips for Constructive Arguments with Your Loved One by Barton Goldsmith, PhD, who calls himself an emotional fitness. Number one, understand that anger itself is not destructive. There is a vast difference between anger and rage. When someone is angry, they need to state their feelings. They don't break things or relationships. That is rageful behavior. So we talked about that already. If it gets out of control, you've got to step away or call somebody or do something. Go. Number two, talk about your feelings before you get angry. When you or your partner can approach the situation as it happens and deal with it in a safe way, it may not get to the point of being an argument. Sometimes things just need to be verbalized and most arguments can be avoided if your partner understands how you feel. So yeah, don't wait until one of you is, is peeved later and then you're still, you bring up something from three, four days ago and then you can't really even talk about it because you don't remember the complete feelings or situations or how it went. You're just trying to throw it in their face to win an argument. Number three, and here's going to be the most difficult one, folks. Don't, and I repeat, don't raise your voice. It's amazing how issues of hurt feelings or differences can be resolved with a whisper. I counsel couples who are yellers to only communicate with a whisper. And it greatly reduces the anger factor in their relationships. Number four, don't threaten your relationship and don't take every argument as a threat to your relationship. This type of emotional blackmail puts the other partner in a panic slash flight or fight Mode. I think you put flight in there twice, bro. While you're telling them you want to leave, they may be making plans to find a roommate. In addition, they may be so devastated by the thought of losing their family, they go into a deep depression and are unable to give you what it is you need. Then it would be flight or flight. You know, because they're not fighting for it. This is panic slash flight or flight mode. Yeah. You said flight or fight because you thought he just typed flight twice but that's what he's like meaning is that pretty much your partner 
isn't going to want to fight for the relationship. They're just going to be like, well, screw you then, bud. And they like give up. Yeah, it could be. Holy smokes. That was a loud one. Number five, don't stockpile. This is where you bring up issues from the past to use as a hammer against whatever problem your partner has asked for help with. Nobody heard your mm mm-hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. deal with their issue first and if you really have unresolved feelings from past problems talk about them at another time remember folks it takes two for all of these things to work remember folks it takes two of you to make all of this work number six don't avoid your anger if you stuff your feelings long enough you will explode and say or do things that you will regret You already know one of my favorite quotes is, don't make a permanent mistake because you're temporarily upset. Anger does not diminish love. You can be angry with those you love. In fact, the ones we love hurt us the most because we love them the most. Number seven, create a process for resolving problems without anger. Start by each of you taking five minutes to state your feelings. Then take a 20-minute break to think about things and come back to the table for another 10 minutes to discuss how you think you can deal with the problem. Also, know that it's okay if the problem doesn't get solved right away. I would like to add to that one too, that proper, and maybe people are different about this, but for me myself, proper conversation etiquette is a big deal. If you over talk or you interrupt or whatever else, we've argued while arguing about arguing and about how to argue. And don't cut me off. No, you cut me off. Okay, don't cut me off. And then minutes later, oh, you cut me off. And you're just mad. So you're not really finding the solution, you know, there either. So I like that little tidbit. Number eight, abuse is never allowed. This includes verbal abuse, any type of violence, including slamming doors, breaking plates, or hitting. If your arguments escalate to this level, you need to leave the house. If one partner ever hits another, a police report needs to be made and an appointment with a therapist is mandatory. Number nine, don't engage. Ooh, I was going to sneeze. Remember that negative attention is still attention. If your partner tries to goad you into an argument, simply don't go there. Some people actually like to argue because it gives them a temporary feeling of power and gratification. Avoid being sucked into their need for attention. I knew it. I have said before that some people must just like to argue because they like that shit. And I was right. So I bet that some people just like to feel bad. They like to dramatize things. They like to argue. They like to be negative, you know, and so that they need, you need that therapeutic, you need those practices, happiness practices, positivity, the gratitude, all that stuff. Well, it's kind of like children that misbehave sometimes how they're seeking attention, even if it is a negative attention that they're seeking that attention. So it goes the same way. Yeah. And last but not least, number 10, listen to your body. When you are angry and your body releases chemicals that may cause you to react in ways that can be destructive to you, your partner, and your relationship, learn to understand your feelings and how the process of anger affects you physically and emotionally. Research has shown that couples who argue more than 20% of the time are probably not going to survive. Whoa. Well, that's interesting considering how we started this episode. (laughs) Hopefully these tips will help you get your arguments under control and reduce the level of energy in those arguments. If not, and if you want to keep your relationship, you need to find a qualified couples therapist. Which we have. Amazing. You know, that is a believer in therapy. Okay. But I think we, I mean, I know that say only 20%. Is it the only 20% people make it? Well, yeah, he said, um, if you research has shown that couples who argue more than 20% of the time are probably not going to survive. Yeah. I mean, the fact that it takes two, it takes two, but I mean, the fact of our arguing has decreased while we still say we argue or debate a lot. Um, it all depends on the DEF CON level because our debate is sometimes because we just, have difference of opinions well and we've been together forever so to the outside world it could be like hey do you why don't you buy 
the two ply toilet paper. Well, I don't know. I just thought this was the one. Nope, that's one ply, and you should have got two ply. And I'm like, okay, well, you, you want to get the toilet paper next time? Excuse me. And then it's just probably a way for people to vent or someone like us who've been together for hundreds, yeah, like hundreds of years. But we've we've defied the odds considering most things in our marriage we've beat those odds so most things that we have gone through and that we have overcome are all pretty astonishing in those percentages and so um are you taking pictures and i have makeup like smeared all I over just, my face fayette just snapped oh. so i just sent basically the microphone and your blurry face oh, okay, good. so nobody's gonna see your warped mascara or whatever that yeah, stuff's called I have, like raccoon eyes because i've been rubbing my eyes so much they itch okay anyways <sighs> um oh crap what was i saying oh anyways to find that so, so you know i had a friend recently go ask me like how did you guys make it through it and i was honest and i said i honestly don't know there were some days that maybe giving up would have been easier but I guess that's not the way we wanted to do it. You know, we always said that this would make us stronger. It would make us closer. It would teach our children, you know, love, like what love is. And like Stephen keeps saying, it takes two. So it took both of us wanting to continue to fight, but not fight as an argumentative, but to fight for our relationship in order for this to have continued. You know, and I had a friend one time say, okay, now you're going to choose to be with him despite whatever happened. And I said, yep. So this goes back to, I think it was your number five. She goes, then I never want you to hear you use it against him ever again. Like it's done. You make this choice. You want to be with him. Then do not bring and rehash this up against him. And it was really sound, great advice from her. That was also one of the tips that was involved in the article we just went over together. That's why I said I believe it was number five. Holy smokes, guys. Like OMG. Why do people listen to us? (laughs) I don't know. It's going to be less and less pretty soon here. Oh, man. Okay, well, you feel good about it then? I mean, yeah. I hope that you guys can understand that. It takes work every day, marriage and relationships take work and that it's okay if you do have that difference of opinions between the two of you, because God forbid, you don't want to be the exact same person that would make your you know relationship lose dynamic, but to make sure that you are continuing that conversation, continuing that communication in these healthy ma- manners. There is also another, uh Um, another positive way to channel that passion. So fight for your, fight for your right to, uh, be intimate with your spouse. I was going to say, are you talking about sex? Intimacy is, uh, one of the most powerful, uh, bonding things you can have in a relationship. Scientifically, when you, um, have relations with somebody, uh, especially your spouse over and over, you know, over time, um, it releases oxytocin, um, which uh, helps bond you to that person. And originally they found oxytocin was generally most prominent when uh, women would nurse with their uh, their newborns. And now they're finding how oxytocin is released in many different ways. But it's basically a bonding chemical within your body. So we know about dopamine and we know about um, endorphins and and stuff like that. So oxytocin, um, and I haven't done research on this, but apparently you can get, um, I know they've done psychological studies where they have uh, like nasally or orally injected oxytocin and then asked two groups of people, one with it and one without it, a series of questions. And obviously the people with oxytocin had a more positive, optimistic outlook. So not only does it bond you with your partner, and I'm talking about doing this consistently, because again, it takes two, especially to do that, (laughs) Um, but it bonds you to that partner and it can alleviate a lot of, you know, issues that either one of you might be going through, which maybe there's a whole nother episode on that because then you also have to take care of each other. So 
Um, I feel like that's a different episode. That's what I just said. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, um, there's some tips on arguing with some positive psychology. So. And then makeup sex. Yep. <laughs> Guess she, she's for it tonight. Crack, crack that bottle. Or the energy drink or whatever. Alrighty. Uh, Good? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you all from the bottom of our hearts for listening to the Positively Midwest podcast. Our hope has always been to inspire, engage each other's thoughts, and leave you with some smoking great advice. Be sure to join our Facebook group. And by golly, will you follow us on Instagram because it's tough to build that on my own. At Positively Midwest Podcast. That's what we're called. Find us. Make sure you like, comment, share, and screenshot our podcast with all of your cool friends because, yes, every little bit helps. We're on most all major platforms, and you can stream it directly on our website at PositivelyMidwest.com. Also, check out all of our merch in our online store. All the proceeds go to help those find therapy or rehab. Please reach out to us at PositivelyMidwest at gmail.com if you would like to look into therapy. Thank you, and as always, please always stay positive.